Hello, everyone, and welcome to GoLeopards.com on the Lafayette Sports Network. Matt Fine along with the skipper, Joe Kinney. Matt, good to see you again. Welcome back to another it's season. Baseball season is yeah, coming or near. Yeah, baseball season 365. We do it all year, 12 months out of the year. Let's do it again, <laughs> right? Finishing the fall, getting to the spring. We'll talk all about that. Your 21st season, we're getting ready for that. And before we start talking about this, this is a recruiting talk today, your class of 2024, the high school class of 2020. Uh, but as we start talking about these nine, I also want to talk about your fall season. You're just wrapping up. We'll talk about the spring a little bit as well. But let's focus on the fall for a second. Most teams, they play a couple of games locally against rivals. They have all of their morning practices and their, their NCAA-mandated afternoon practices. But you guys did something a little bit different this year. You went to Cooperstown. And I ha have to imagine that was a really exciting road trip for this team as they get ready for the spring, seeing what baseball is all about and not only the history, but you got to play some games up there. Uh, we did. We were looking for something uh, maybe unique to do in the fall, just to kind of get the team together off campus where they can kind of connect on a different level. Um, obviously, tying it into the Hall of Fame was kind of neat to, to see the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. A lot of guys had not been there or had not been there since they were younger and maybe played at tournaments up there. Uh, so we were able to go there on a Friday, or excuse me, on a Saturday, and we went right to the Hall of Fame, toward the Hall of Fame, which was neat. Had a chance to spend some time in Cooperstown, which if you've been to Cooperstown, it's mm -hmm. a charming you know, yes. little town. great little town, yeah. And then we stayed at a campground where the guys stayed in bunks, the coaches <laughs> stayed in cabins, which was interesting. But this campground had a baseball field, so we were able to practice at the field. And then we had dinner and then did some team activities and got to laugh at each other a little bit and laugh with each other, which, again, sometimes on campus there's a – attention, if you would, just a natural attention of work and practice and lifting and all those kinds of things. Um, we were able to get away from that. And then on Sunday, we played at the stadium in Cooperstown Historic Double Day Field. I had seen a Hall of Fame game there back in 1979. Mm -hmm. I saw the Pirates play the White Sox. Harold Baines was a rookie. And if anybody remembers baseball, uh, 79 Pirates won the World Series. Right. So it was kind of cool. The American League and National League used to play a game every year in July, right around the Hall of Fame induction ceremony in the stadium. So we got to play there. That was neat for me just to kind of go back to that field. And we played Lemoyne College in a one long game sort of doubleheader right. per the rules. Okay, so that's very exciting uh, to be able to do that. And you're building, it's building blocks, I would, I would say, for the spring. You've gotten to know these guys. You have a lot of freshmen, obviously, they're trying to get to know the upperclassmen. So I would imagine all that is great. If, in fact, if you don't, by the way, uh, you should follow Lafayette um, on Instagram. Correct. We see your yep. baseball Instagram page, uh, your your stories, guys, yeah. 6.35 a.m. and they're lifting. Yeah, and, my you know, assistants run exactly. that. They do a tremendous job of tracking what we're doing on a regular basis. They're outside, basis. sometimes they're inside, and it's it's a lot of fun, and they did a lot of great stuff um, in documenting your, your trip to Cooperstown, so that was really great. So let's talk about the here. Actually, let's talk about the future. This is really your class of 2020 high school class. They're going to graduate Lafayette in 2024. Yeah, if they, hard to if, think that far ahead. It is. It's amazing correct. because yep. we, you know, we think about the season that's coming up, but none of these guys we're going to see on the field in a meaningful game for you until 2021. Correct. So we are, but you know, it, it comes fast. So we, we might as well get to know these guys because these are the future of Lafayette baseball. So we'll talk about them. Nine players on this list. We got one guy or a couple guys you think might be two-way players. We have a bunch of right-handed pitchers. We'll talk about them. Uh, some of the things I also want to mention is where you find these young men to play for you. We got one from PA, two from New Jersey. We have one from New York, two from Maryland, and then we start to get a little bit farther away. We have Connecticut, Florida, and Texas. That makes up your class of 2024. I also did some math. I'm not really good with math, so I might be wrong here, but the average height, 6'1", 190 pounds. So you got some big boys coming in, and we'll talk all about mm -hmm. them. But as a whole, how do you feel about your class? I mean, very excited. It's a little smaller. Last year, we brought in 12 guys. Uh, you know, your numbers kind of fluctuate year to year, 8, 9 on the small side, 11, 12 on the large side. A lot of that's due to graduation, maybe due to certain positions mm -hmm. graduating. So a little on the smaller side, but, you know, very excited. Uh, guys that have, uh, one, tremendous ability, we think, but also experience playing in competitive situations. Uh, high school and or summer programs that have played at a high level have succeeded, have won championships, competed for championships. But that's in a nice, nice intangible. All right, so let's talk about it. Let's start off with your right, first right-handed pitcher. You've got a bunch of them. We'll start off with Adam uh, Bogosian. He is a right-handed pitcher, 6'3", 175 from Brooklyn, uh, plays for Team Beast out of New York. That's the summer and fall team. A lot of your guys, by the way, real top-notch summer programs or travel programs, I guess we would say, which is, I, I think, 
in today's age where you're really finding these guys is much different than what it was a generation ago where you might find them at the high schools. Now you're finding them in places like Georgia at the perfect game and things like that. But tell me about Adam a little bit. Yeah, oh, uh, high school is very important, mm -hmm. you know, high school baseball, but it's very difficult to get out to see Right, because guys. it's during your season. Correct. Right. So you're going to see guys predominantly in the summer, and if they're playing in competitive situations uh, with one of their team in two tournaments, then it gives us a better opportunity to really evaluate what right. they can do. Uh, Adam goes to Beacon High School, a public school, sort of a magnet school in New York City. The thing that's neat about Adam, and I think by a larger extent, New York City baseball players is the commitment they have to make to play baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, they're taking subways to games, they're yeah. playing in Central Park or other fields that are really not what a lot of us are used to. And uh, that's a, a commitment that speaks to his passion and desire to play. And that's that's a part of it. You've got to be able to throw and, you know, put up a number on a radar gun and Which so on and so forth. Which he puts up 80s. He's in the high 80s. He's a guy who might touch um, 90 real soon. But you take that with the, the passion and commitment for the game and that is an attractive asset, you know, that, that we look at and somebody we're certainly looking forward to having join our program. Okay, go down the list here and I'm gonna, this is the guy I might pronounce wrong. Let me get it right, Blaze Fadio. Did Blaze, I get that right? Blaze Fadio, there good baseball go. name. Infielder, 5'10", 170, out of New Jersey, Audubon, New Jersey. And you call him a baseball rat and when I see middle infielder and I see baseball rat, it makes me think of, of obviously of Justin Johnson, that kind of a type. I'm not sure if that's fair or not fair. You let me know, is he that kind of a player? Well, I certainly hope so. Justin was the Rookie of the Year in the Patriot League last year, so those are uh, high standards to live up to, and I would never really say he's that guy. You do look at players and think, okay, he's got some similar movements to guys either you've coached or currently have in your program. Uh, Blaze is a middle infielder, plays for a, a, a small high school in New Jersey, Audubon High School, that's had a lot of success for many, many years. Uh, and then again, another uh, you know uh, competitive summer program, Mid-Atlantic Show, and uh, we got on him early, and Jim Rat, you know, means a guy that, you know. It's a compliment, by the way, just it is. for the record. When I say someone says you're a baseball rat, that's good, you know, right? Usually you see that in basketball, the guy that has the keys in yeah. the gym and gets in and takes 100 extra shots He turns shots the lights on, he turns the lights off, Correct. right? So baseball, it's a guy that's getting extra fungos. Particularly infielders, you might say, are the guys often most referred to as baseball rats mm -hmm. or gym rats who are looking to do those little things that are not as glamorous. You know, hitting and RBIs and home runs and all those things are glamorous. Blaze is what we've seen, that type of player, so we're excited to have him join as well. Okay. Uh, down the list we go, uh, Bo Planeta. Did I say that right? Correct. Right. Planeta, first baseman, 6'3", big guy, right-hander, uh, also does some outfield, uh, so he's got a couple of different positions for you from Florida, Tampa, Florida. Tell me about him. Big hitter. Uh, unique, this little backstory on Bo, uh, we've known about him for about four years now, three years. His grandmother used to work at Lafayette. Mm -hmm. She's retired from Lafayette. So that's sort of what got him to reach out and contact us and he attended some camps and got to know him and see him play a little bit and liked what he can do. Played for a state championship team, Cavalry Christian High School, and then plays for a, a sort of national summer program. They have teams in, in various states, the five-star program. So we got a chance to see him play with them as well. And he's a young man that's a corner infield, corner outfield, corner infield at first base, corner outfield who has a chance to be a middle of the lineup type hitter and you know production, RBIs, things like that. And Bo's not the only one who's, all your guys have, but in specific to high school, winning state titles. We'll talk about another guy down the list a little bit more that's winning big time games on the high school level that hopefully will translate um, to Lafayette. Uh, but we'll move on, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But Drew Smiley, another right-handed pitcher, uh, 6'5", uh, 215 from Washington Crossing, PA near New Hope. The Hun School, uh, and that's one of the private schools in Princeton. He actually spent um, some years at Holy Ghost Prep, which is just outside of Philly, or actually in the Northeast area of Philadelphia, and then into Jersey. Tell me about Drew. Drew attended Holy Ghost Prep, graduated from Holy Ghost Prep, a Catholic school in Bucks County, and is doing a post-grad year, so a fifth year at um, the Hun School, as you mentioned, in Princeton. Uh, Right-handed pitcher, plays for also a very competitive and successful and, and long-standing summer program, Tri-State Arsenal. Right, you got a couple uh, guys from Tri-State. I do, I have yeah. two guys from mm -hmm. them. Um, and and they, they're playing you know, regionally and nationally in, in all the big tournaments. And you always have a representative group of guys who are the most talented and 
New Jersey, and New, some in New York, and, and some in Pennsylvania as well. Okay, I remember the tri-state. They got the blue uniforms. You yes. see them, yep. you see them walking onto the field. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's old English. Eh? It's imposing, isn't it? Yep. And Drew, by the way, um, high 80s uh, fastball for yep. you. He's got 87 is where he's at right now, and obviously a lot of room to improve. But a mature guy spending that extra year. Uh, Jack Cope, another right-handed pitcher, uh, 6'2", 210. And this one from Chevy Chase, Maryland. Uh, plays for Mid-Atlantic Red Sox. That's his travel program. Tell me about uh, tell me about Jack. Jack goes to the Landon School, a private school. I, I've had some players uh, attend Lafayette from in the past in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, you know, very good school. So academics certainly important, and Jack certainly is looking forward to studying at Lafayette. Uh, right-handed pitcher. You mentioned the Mid-Atlantic Red Sox, so they're a predominant team. Uh, sort of central Maryland, southern Pennsylvania, maybe a little bit into Virginia. Uh, I've had a number of high profile type players and we got to see Jack at some workouts that they had and you know, followed him through the summer and I mean, he progressed to the point we felt that he was going to be a tremendous addition to the baseball program. We go back to the outfield, someone that also has shown that he can pitch, a right-handed pitcher, Joe Pence, uh, 5'10", 175 from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Uh, and what stands out about him is the high school program that he plays for, uh, one of the great programs, I think, in any state. Uh, Joe's one of our two-way players, a pitcher position player. He's mm -hmm. an outfielder who pitches. Another Tri-State Arsenal guy, too, by the way. Also plays yep. for Tri-State Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Will have an opportunity to pitch. You know, the positive thing about fall, uh, college baseball is that our fall season is important, but it doesn't count in terms of records or anything like that. So you can do different things with your players, different positions, different manipulations of lineups and pitching and all those types of things and really see what players can do. So Joe's going to get a chance to, to pitch a little bit, certainly play the outfield and hopefully compete for a spot. It attends Bishop Eustis, a uh, Catholic school in southern New Jersey, which is among the most competitive high schools in the state, has put out some very high first round draft picks over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some players from Bishop Eustis who played very, very well. In fact, the other player I've had from Bishop Eustis. Uh, now, not, not a young man anymore, but um, a young man by the name of Kevin Casey was a two-way player for us okay. and, and was very successful. We go to the outfield now, Justin Greck. Uh, I guess a righty with the arm, Does it lefty at the plate? Yeah, a little, little atypical. Okay. Uh, throws left, bats right. Okay. And uh, 5'9", 170, and this is your Texas recruit. He is. He's a center fielder for Carroll High School, mm -hmm. which is a 6A large school classification in Texas. Won the state championship last year, which in 6A in Texas baseball is that's your big boys legitimate. Yeah, uh, high school baseball. Um, he was the MVP of the state tournament as well. And while that's not in and of itself a reason to recruit somebody, those are nice pieces as you're learning more They're about winners. players and see their abilities. Mm -hmm. You know, and find a way to help their team contribute. And he's playing on a team really with nine to ten Division One guys a year, okay. and guys that are attending SEC and. Big 12 and, and schools of that nature. And also just a, a side note, the uh, C3 Futures, his travel team coached by, uh, by Todd Van Poppel, who former first round pick, uh, MLB longtime pitcher, so played for six different teams in, in Major League Baseball. So this is a, a guy who has seen, or he's being watched over by people who know how to be successful in this, uh, in this sport. Yeah, no question. I'm sure Justin's learned quite a bit from someone like Todd Van Poppel, who, it, in the 90s, if I remember, was a, a very heralded high school player who uh, got to the majors very, very early. In fact, might have got a little too early, if I remember, and that might have had an impact on his career. But uh, his wisdom, I'm sure, is helping young men like Justin mm -hmm. you know, adjust to the demands of baseball, the grind of playing baseball, and then what the expectations may be of playing college and potentially professional baseball. It, it's such that. a mental game. Baseball is such a mental game. And I think when you have a Todd Van Poppel, that's got to help you obviously with the tools, but also it's got to help you upstairs in, in a big way. Luke Benneke, right-handed pitcher, also some outfield first base, 6'4", uh, another big guy, 6'4", 215 from Connecticut. Uh, another two-way guy. He, he, Luke's a young man that we see as a pitcher who can hit, and he's going to get a chance to hit, whether that's a DH, whether that's first base, corner outfield, that'll remain to be seen. Uh, Luke plays for the Connecticut Blue Jays, coached by a gentleman by the name of Mike McGuire. Mike's been doing this probably longer than I have. and. I've had, as Mike pointed out when Luke committed here, I have not gone four years without one of his guys mm -hmm. just by, there's no design in that, but the luck of the draw, if you would. So I've had a young man, four years, 
graduates, another guy four years graduates, and that's going on now about 16 years. Let's take the pipeline, that's so, not a bad way to go. It's good when you have relationships and, and trust, mm -hmm. because we'll see a young, young man play maybe two, three times if we're lucky, or, or video and all those types of things. And you know, you're looking at how they succeed, but you also really need to know how they fail. That's mm -hmm. a big part of playing baseball. And having a relationship with a coach such as Mike, you get to talk about how they fail, how they handle that failure, how they handle the ins and outs of playing every day or, or whatever it may be, and that's very helpful. Sounds good. We'll go to number nine. Now, Michael Malice, a catcher. He's the only catcher on this list. Uh, righty, 5'11", 170, out of Maryland. Yep, Mike attends the Gilman School, a very good uh, private school in the um, uh, Catholic League mm -hmm. in Baltimore, which is as competitive a, a high school league in the state of Maryland. Uh, plays for the Baltimore Redbirds, where we saw him play in the summer. Um, a very athletic catcher, also a volleyball player. Haven't had a whole lot of volleyball players in my time, but he's he's the kind of guy, uh, I believe they're called the libretto in volleyball. They wear a different jersey. They want to set everything set, up, right? But they run around and play different okay. spots. There's always, I know nothing about not volleyball. I apologize. Volleyball. I'm going to embarrass myself. But there's that one person yeah. on, on the he's, floor. He's who's not always, the setter. He's, he's the, always in a different top. That's him. Yes, okay. That's him. So he's got an athleticism. <laughs> we'll have to come back to you on that one. Have more knowledge next time. <laughs> he has an athleticism that might be a little bit unique to the catching position. Okay, sounds good. So those are your nine. Uh, and I, I'm sure you're very excited about them. And I, I ask you this every year, and I, I'm always very curious. Now, you won't see them again. You've talked to them, and, and you're going to be in touch every once in a while, and they might stop in on campus and, and what have you, but you're not really going to get your hands on them until August uh, into September. What is your goal for them now? Because they have their senior year. It's such an important time in their lives. What's your goal between now and when you physically see them at Lafayette? I, I mean, number one, graduate, obviously. Mm -hmm. So continue to do the academic work that's, mm -hmm. that's required to graduate and then be able to attend Lafayette. Number two, enjoy their senior year. You know, recruiting can be stressful. No doubt about it, decisions and travel and baseball and all those types of things and phone calls and what have you. So enjoy your senior year. Obviously, play your senior season and be as successful as you can be. And that doesn't mean you have to hit 350 or win 10 games or strike out you know, 15 a game or whatever it may be. Just go out and compete, have fun, help your team, You know, uh, compete for whatever you're trying to compete. Ideally, winning is, is tremendous because you learn a lot winning and have a lot of fun doing it. But really just enjoy being a part of your high school baseball team. And hopefully that enthusiasm, passion I mentioned before, kind of carries through to when they become freshmen here next August. So as we wrap things up, let's talk about your upcoming season just real quickly. It's, it must be so exciting. It feels like it's so far away, but it's really not that far away because the college season starts so quickly when you get back from winter break. Uh, your first trip down to High Point, North Carolina, uh, for a three-game set there, which I, I know is very exciting, but also we're talking about a trip down south again where you're going to be playing at Miami some, and Georgetown, some really big teams and some exciting times coming up for this team. Can you talk about that a little bit? We'll see before we get you back uh, into the Patriot League, what will this team be facing February into early and mid-March? Uh, we have no question. Very exciting. We have six starters returning in our lineup. Three of them were all conference players. Justin Johnson was mentioned before. Our shortstop was the rookie of the year. Ethan Stern, a second baseman, and Trey Dura, our left fielder. So those are three guys that uh, we're certainly looking at are going to Big lead us. Big time catcher coming back as well. Uh, our catcher is coming back, Dylan Mangini. Um, and then uh, on the pitching side, uh, a lot of our key pitchers are back. All our starters are back. Uh, J.P. Woodward. Brett Cryer uh, are two guys that we're looking to really lead the pitching staff. Um, and then Kyle Subers was a freshman a year ago, kind of broke into our rotation, pitched well down the stretch. Mark Anderson, who has had a lot of experience in his three years as a senior pitcher. Uh, so we're looking for them to lead us. And then we also, you, interestingly, is we, we feel we have an experienced team, but we also have a fairly large freshman class. Mm -hmm. Don't often say that. And um, they're going to contribute as well. They've we feel perform very well in the fall season, and we're looking forward to mixing them in, and you know whether that be in the lineup or the rotation come come the spring. And then our, our season is exciting. Uh, we mentioned we open up at High Point. We're playing Davidson VMI teams. We typically played, you know, historically. We're playing at Towson, um, and then spring break we're playing Georgetown in Florida, and then we have an opportunity to play at the University at of the Miami, University which, Miami which is. Good. Quite pretty a trick. unique uh, yeah. experience for our players, so we're looking forward to that. All right, well, I think it's impossible not to say, not to argue, or possible to argue against the fact that this team is 
uh, trending in the right direction last year, above 500 in conference in, in the uh, Patriot League, made the playoffs two-time defending Liberty Bell uh, champs. Uh, so that's also on your schedule coming up. So a lot of good things with yep. the, the people that are coming back and your recruiting class for 2021, all sorts of different balls in the air, but I'm very excited for you and I'm excited for the spring, Coach. It should be a, it should be a fun ride. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate Sounds it. Good. It was good seeing you again. Have a good night. Okay. So we're going to wrap that up, our recruiting talk for the high school class of 2020. It's the Lafayette class of 2024 here on the Lafayette Sports Network on GoLeopards.com. Check us out all spring long. We'll be there with plenty of baseball news for you. Matt Fine and Joe Kinney. Take care, everybody.